Dr. Mairead Maloney is an assistant professor of sociology at the University of Kentucky, and she's joining us on this upcoming edition of Connections to talk with us about women and body image, the sexualization of women, and eating disorders, and they're all connected. And Dr. Maloney, we have a great conversation. It went by too fast. It did. It did, but you really gave us a lot of great information, not just about how eating disorders and body image is affecting our adolescent and teens and college girls, but also middle-aged women. I think right. that's a thing that we hadn't thought was going on. Right, that's exactly right. But I think as we learn more about the triggers, hopefully the mechanisms that we use to, to help younger women can also be applied to, to older women as well. And so the same therapies that are used to help younger women also apply to older women? That's right. So they do a variety of inpatient or outpatient treatment. They'll do a variety of, of therapies, counseling, work with nutritionists. Um, and I will say the one good thing is once you're middle-aged or older, you do have more perspective mm -hmm. and you have a sense of your mortality. And so we do see somewhat better cure rates among women who develop it in that age group. But one of the things you point out during the interview is that now uh, in our society, women are expected throughout their lifetime yeah. to maintain a certain level of sexiness and appeal and attractiveness. And that doesn't, regardless of age. That's exactly right. And that's making the difference here. Absolutely. So the pressure that we're getting from society, from the media, even from our own peer groups to be perpetually youthful and sexy, it's just not realistic. Yeah, but we also see, Dr. Maloney, a pushback from that, not just from certain uh, merchandise and campaign commercials, from certain uh, brands to say women of everyday size and, and beauty are beautiful. Yes. So we're seeing that response and we're seeing this different type of feminism that says we should just embrace ourselves, but it seems like that other image mm -hmm. uh, uh, is still heavier, for the lack of, uh, to use a bad yeah. pun there, than the more positive you be you. Unfortunately, you're right. I do think that the negative messages at this time are just a lot more prevalent than the positive messages. But I do think we can start to see a sea change occur when we get a lot more of the body positivity out there. But we have to start this young. I mean, as you and I discussed, by age six, girls have a real stigma uh, on what fat is, and by age 11, about to 13, about half of women have tried diets. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not a rite of passage we want all of our no. girls to, to go through. No, it's not. And when we think about eating disorders, I guess the ultimate manifestation of how this body image, unrealistic body image is unhealthy, is when it affects your physical health. And you really do connect for us the dots that it is like an addiction. It is. I mean, it's a very similar in that sense because it really is out of these people's control. Um, it might start off as dieting and seeing how it goes or trying a new dieting trick, but for a certain subset of the population, it seems to trigger almost an addiction to, mm -hmm. to this behavior, and they are not able to stop on their own. Yeah. Well, we have a lot more insight for you about all of these issues coming up on Connections Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on KET2 and Sunday at 1.30 on KET, the main channel, and you can watch online anytime after that on KET.org slash connections. I hope you'll join us. Woo! <laughs>